Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what they what you know. Right. Keep them poor. So my father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him. Said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I asked him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money or that they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> you know, it's like, so how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and he had hotels and restaurants and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice basically, but I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day I got upset. I said, well, when are you gonna teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one greenhouse. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. It still is today. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. But is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York, and I come back to Hawaii and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys because Waikiki was a little dirt water, little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he, then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, it I, just, and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. I've had f financial crashes. I've had people stab me in the back. But they're all good because I grow from it. That's spirituality. Right. You know, people who are afraid of making mistakes like they teach in school, they don't ever grow. 
because spirituality is there's good and there's bad, there's right and there's wrong, there's up and there's down. Most people only want to be right, they only want to be positive. Well, you can't have that, that's not reality. Well, I wasn't poor by most people's standards, but I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean, because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. Poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. And middle class is taught in families. And so the people right now who are sitting at home <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or unhappy, they may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing, it was probably taught to you. You know, your super ego was taught get a job, work hard, or you'll, or you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. The school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like taxes. You gotta know that stuff but they don't teach it in school to anybody. So, and, and then when people ask me, how did your rich dad learn this when your poor dad, a PhD, didn't? And the answer is very simply, my rich dad was my, my best friend's father. His father died when he was 13. So his so rich dad had this family business at 13 to run. So he had to drop out of school, which was his blessing. You know, those blessings and you know, sometimes a blessing doesn't look like a blessing, but it turned out to be a blessing. And then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, his banker, his real estate agents. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects they, don't, they themselves don't practice. I asked the teacher, I said, you know, it's, I'm in my third year of calculus now. It was, called, it was called strength of materials. I said, am I ever gonna use this stuff? He goes, no. You know, I said, why do you teach it? He says, because I get paid. I said, do you ever use it? He goes, no. And that's why, you know, I, you have to, in life, one of the things I suggest to people, you gotta find a real teacher versus a fake teacher. And a fake teacher is somebody who doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day. So my accountants, my attorneys, they're in it every single day. That's how I learn, because every day I'm solving problems in my business. So I have, I have accountants and attorneys and bankers and all these people on speed dial because I'm, I'm solving problems with my team. I see you giving this knowledge out and yeah. do, do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Rob? Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. But, you know, unfortunately the poor, as was in the Bible, I'm not real religious, the poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. Right. It's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. Again, I'm not really religious. I flunked out of Sunday school also. But when they say I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. My PhD daddy says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. And your rich dad used to say what, instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take, or why should I do that? He says, that a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down, and you become what you say. Rugby is a team sport, but so is soccer. The rules are different. And other people are golfers, they play by themselves. And so everybody's different. So my game financially is business, number one. Second is real estate. So what I say to young people is you, know, you find your game. 